stucco parapet walls are known for having moisture problems, as the issues associated with stucco are compounded when applied to a wall assembly without an overhang protecting the top of the wall. In general, parapet walls are risky assemblies, as the intersection between various building geometries and roofing components can be extremely complicated to properly flash and air seal while taking into account other factors like material compatibility, roof membrane terminations, approved substrates, and other critical considerations, and specifying stucco doesn't make this process any easier. If stucco is to be used as a finished material, it must be drained and completely uncoupled from the wall assembly to ensure that the walls stay dry. Additionally, inwardly driven vapor must be controlled to prevent interstitial condensation within the parapet wall assembly. Oftentimes, we see framed stucco parapets rotting out within just a few years after the initial installation. There's a lot of reasons for this, but they all stem from poor water management and a lack of drainage. However, in order to address these issues, it's important to understand that stucco is classified as a reservoir cladding, meaning that it absorbs and stores water and redistributes that water to materials that are in direct contact with it. Many stucco repairs on parapets focus on sealing the stucco and filling in any cracks that might have formed due to excessive amounts of water absorption. The main problem with this approach is that it completely ignores the core of the issue. No matter how well you seal and caulk the cracks of the stucco, it's still going to leak and allow water to wick inside. New cracks will form in the stucco facade over time, allowing water to enter, resulting in another failure. The cracks form because of the presence of water as well as building movement. This was one of the main issues with EFIS, or exterior insulating finishing systems back in the 1990s when these synthetic stucco systems were face sealed and it often resulted in failures. So what do we need to do to prevent stucco failures in parapet walls? Well, we need to assume that the stucco will get wet and leak inside, and we need to provide a drainage gap between the stucco layer and the waterproofing to alleviate hydrostatic pressure against the parapet walls, and to provide the benefits of a bond break. This drainage gap can be accomplished simply with a dimple mat, rolls of entangled mesh with a filter fabric facer, or a grooved drainage mat. Water control continuity is critical in any parapet wall assembly, however, with the addition of a reservoir cladding, the framed walls must be completely protected from potential bulk water entry. Remember, we're essentially installing a wet sponge against our building, and we have to design the assembly in a way to resist constant saturation and water inundation. The roof membrane should either be an adhered or fluid applied system to prevent water and air leakage into the assembly. We need to flash the top of the parapet wall with a flashing membrane that's compatible with the roof membrane on the interior side of the parapet, as the flash membrane will need to lap over the roof membrane termination. Oftentimes, flashing membranes are composed of SBS rubberized asphalt, which can pose compatibility issues when in contact with membrane materials like EPDM, TPO, and PVC. The goal of this flashing membrane is to connect the roof membrane to the weather-resistive barrier on the exterior side of the walls to ensure that we have a completely monolithic, continuous water control layer. Sometimes it's necessary to bridge the connection between the flashing membrane and the weather-resistive barrier or the roof membrane with a compatible flashing tape to avoid potential fish mouthing or loss of adhesion at these connections. We have a whole video breaking down the basics of parapet design and parapet detailing, which I'll link up here. Vapor drive is another factor that must be addressed in order to prevent moisture accumulation within the parapet assembly. As I mentioned before, stucco is a reservoir cladding. It stores water, and when the sun hits the facade of the building, both water and vapor are rapidly driven inside due to the differentials in temperature and vapor pressure. Moisture moves from warm to cold and from higher concentrations to lower concentrations. The larger the gradient, the stronger the vapor drive. We can address liquid water that's driven inside by providing a drainage gap. However, we need to prevent excessive amounts of vapor from diffusing into the walls that could result in condensation within the parapet assembly. The backside of the parapet is wrapped in an impermeable roofing membrane. Excessive amounts of vapor driven through the parapet walls can condense on the backside of this membrane if the dew point temperature is reached since vapor can't dry through that membrane. We need to slow down or stop the movement of vapor into the parapet assembly that could cause this interstitial condensation. My preferred strategy to address both drainage and inwardly driven vapor is to install a dimple mat between the weather resistive barrier and the stucco layer. Dimple mats are composed of high density polyethylene and will serve as a vapor barrier between the wet stucco and the weather resistive barrier. However, unlike a polyethylene sheet, the dimple mat will allow air to flow freely between the wall and the stucco, preventing any moisture issues associated with vapor barriers. The walls can dry from the inside outwards into the air gap created by the dimples, and any water that happens to get behind the dimple mat will simply drain down and out of the assembly. The stucco is completely uncoupled from the wall assembly, keeping the walls dry. Parapets are exposed to extreme weathering, and there's a high likelihood of both water and air leakage at this location. This is another reason why we want to avoid products like building wraps or house wraps, as it's quite difficult to detail these systems to be airtight, as both air and water can travel freely behind the building wrap since it's not bonded to the sheathing. 
We need to specify an airtight weather-resistive barrier product, such as a self-adhered or fluid-applied system, in which the membrane is completely bonded to the substrate, eliminating any potential for air leakage and reducing the impact of a leak. Coping details are crucial to keeping the top of the parapet walls dry and durable, as the coping protects the walls from water, weathering, and UV exposure, and it directs water away from the moisture-sensitive parts of the assembly. Metal copings are the most reliable strategy for keeping stucco parapet walls dry, as metal copings act similarly to a metal flashing with a drip edge, kicking any water away from the stucco facade, and preventing rainwater penetration at the top of the assembly from being absorbed into the stucco. Stucco copings have the highest incidence of failure, as there are no drip edges or kerf cuts that can direct water away from the stucco facade, and if it doesn't have a clear drainage path, it will be held in tension and eventually leak inside. In order to successfully achieve a stucco coping, a continuous drainage gap must be provided from the vertical surface of the walls up to the horizontal surface of the parapet walls and down over the backside of the parapet, where the roof membrane terminates. For more comprehensive information on flat roof assemblies, get my climate-specific guides to flat roof design. These aren't just simple detailed Books. While these books include best practice details, these resources explain the reasoning behind the design decisions using building science principles. No nonsense, no fluff, this is real applicable information that you can use for your flat roof project. Those are only available at asiri-designs.com shop, links will be in the description below. For now, good luck with your projects, cheers.